What's going on my fellow gamers? As we approach a brand new year, I figured I would take it upon myself to teach you all some hot new tips to raise your gaming skills to the next level. You see, this entire time, we've been playing video games with our hands, like a bunch of animals, when realistically, we should have been using our feet instead. The Nintendo Wii Balance Board. Back when the Wii was in its heyday and grandparents just couldn't get enough of that there Wii Sports and Chicken Shoot, the Big N saw an opportunity to tackle the new and huge casual gamer market and get them up and moving and losing a few pounds by selling them a super basic piece of workout software with Wii Fit and basically a bathroom scale to use with it. Working out was the clear main selling point here, and many more games would release that had their own spin on things. Hell, this trend was so popular other consoles got in on it too. And that's all fine and dandy conceptually, but how did it actually work? Well, it's quite simple. It's called a balance board after all. Built in are two sensors, one for each foot, and they can detect just how much pressure you're pushing into each one, as well as where you're shifting your center of balance. That's it. Funnily enough, not even the first time Nintendo would try something like this. It's certainly cool technology, but come on now, I'm a gamer, I gotta see some games here. Hey, you remember when Nintendo themselves tried to convince us that some actual games were gonna be using the board with the help of professional snowboarder Sean White, and he crashed after the first jump? I'll make the next one. <laughs> well damn it, I'll take 20. While plenty of exercise titles over the years would use the board, there are actually a shocking amount of more traditional Wii games that supported it as well. WiiWare had some of these too, that's kinda cool, and the Wii U... Well, it had a good run. So, I've taken it upon myself to scrounge up 10 actual games that support the balance board, and today, I'm gonna dust off that fabled Wii peripheral and give them a whirl. I know a lot of people are gonna be asking about Wii Music, which does have a mode that can use the balance board, but I'm gonna hold off on that one until the time is right, which is hopefully never. I simply have no time or desire to put Wii Music back in my console, I think I'm good for now. I have much more compelling games I want to take a look at. Like, The Garfield Show, Thread of the Space Lasagna. What do you mean you don't think this game is going to be good? Oh man, you know I've never seen the cartoon, but boy does it have a good theme song. I mean, I think most of us are familiar with Garfield, right? Orange Cat, doesn't like Mondays, likes lasagna for some reason. Well, now the lasagna is out for revenge, and this time, it's from space. Somehow, I'm not caught up with the show. They cause a whole bunch of mischief and naturally leave it up to our good old favorite lazy orange feline to save the day. And it's a minigame collection, because of course it is. So this is a pretty common trend when it comes to these games that have some balance board support. We have a bunch of minigames that were already built with the Wii Remote in mind. It's all a matter of sifting through enough menus before realizing, oh, now this one I can finally use the balance board on. There is a proper story mode with linear progression but we're immediately greeted by a game that can only use the Wii Remote. And I don't want that. Luckily, all of the games are already accessible back in the main menu. Alright, here's one. You play as Garfield riding atop Odie, while the other players pester you with balls. You see that meter? Well, that is you shifting your balance to stay on top. It's as simple as that. And then there's this one, where you're rolling a ball to attack the mice, Mario Party style. It's pretty simple, you tilt in any sort of direction, the ball will go that way. It works. Oh, and this one sucks. All you have to do is lean left and right to grab the food and avoid all of the other junk. But here we have a major problem with some of these balance board games. They expect you to make really quick movements back and forth, but sometimes it flat out doesn't function. It's the more subtle movements that are what the balance board does best in my opinion. Like there's a game here that has you remove lasagna pests by replicating Garfield's movements. And yeah, it actually feels like you have to do them in order to succeed. You'll look absolutely ridiculous doing so, but it's the price you pay for immersion in your Garfield video game. Eh, this is just a minigame collection, and only a handful of the games use the board. Wouldn't recommend. How about this? Super Monkey Ball. This seems like it would actually work perfect here. Jump, jump! Jump, jump! Oh boy, I hate, I, I hate this. I hate this so much. Step and Roll takes the typical Monkey Ball formula and simplifies the level design to be easily playable by shifting the world literally under your feet. 
and it actually totally works and feels really good. There are no weird gimmicks either, which is great. Simply get to the goal. No weird jumping, no boss battles, just honest to goodness ball rolling. Oh, and the music is fantastic, by the way. The entire soundtrack is sublime. We also have a graph shown at all times, showing where our balance is being shifted to. And that is actually super appreciated. It helps out quite a bit when I need to figure out how to move. I just wish they got rid of the timer as well. It is a lot tougher getting by the most basic of obstacles here, and running out of time is a more common issue than I've ever experienced in this franchise because of it. But with enough perseverance, you will be plowing through worlds in no time. And you gotta deal with unskippable credits as well. Oh god, why? What a terrible idea that was. It's kind of interesting too, because you can play this entire game with just the Wii Remote, similar to Banana Blitz. But in order to compensate for the easy easier form of control, the game places a ton of obstacles in your path. That doesn't make the game harder, just more annoying. And besides, if you do play the game this way, you are in for the easiest monkey ball game you'll ever experience. A good chunk of the mini games here also use the balance board, and for the most part, they aren't all that bad. Some of them are way worse than others, but I admittedly did have some fun here. Monkey Target was pretty lame though. Come on guys, it used to be the best one. How do they keep messing this up? The snowboarding game in particular is especially cool because you play by rotating the board 90 degrees. Really neat idea. If you're on the lookout for a Super Monkey Ball game that's gonna contort your body to do movements as precise as the GameCube games had you do, sadly that's not here. Also, you may be a bit of a masochist. <laughs> And on the topic of ball rolling games, Marble Saga Kororimpa, sequel to the hot Wii launch game, Kororimpa Marble Mania. All these years later and I still have no idea what Kororimpa means. So I'm actually a huge fan of all of these marble rolling games and these are some of my favorites. They're all about tilting the stage by tilting the Wii remote and I believe they do a much better job of that than either of the monkey ball games did. You can even sequence break this one if you try hard enough. And you can also play as a fat cat. What's not to love? The sequel here, Marble Saga, even has an adventure mode starring this adorable little ant named, wait for it, Anthony. Haha, <laughs> it's me. Take that everybody who ever told me that ant is not a suitable nickname for Anthony. You now all look foolish. Whenever I've been down in life, Kororimpa has always had my back. The balance board support here is way better than in Step and Roll. While the game does have a bunch of levels in the adventure mode, there is a completely different set of levels to use with the balance board, which means we have stages perfectly designed around both types of controller inputs with none of the nonsense Step and Roll gave us. I love this, honestly. It is the best use of the balance board yet. It is definitely harder controlling the game this way, but the stakes are also a lot lower, which is the best way to handle something like this which can't be said for yeah, Punch-Out Wii has balance board support as well. There's not really much to say here, to be honest, aside from it's pretty terrible. Yeah, it works. You dodge in the three different directions that you can normally do with a controller, but like, this game is pretty hard, man. I guess if you go all out and combine this with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck to throw your punches, even get some boxing glove accessories, then maybe it can be kind of immersive? Yeah, no, just stick to a controller. I like Wii Boxing better. But hey, I've been teasing this one long enough. Yes, in fact, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games has support as well. I've said many times before that this is my favorite in the series, so I am actually really looking forward to this. So as it turns out, only half of the events are playable in this mode. We got some skiing, snowboarding by once again rotating the board 90 degrees, and skeleton, which is actually played by sitting on the balance board. That's really cool. Monkey Ball had a similar mini game and that was enjoyable too. Since all of the events here are relatively simplistic, when it comes down to basically tilting left and right and maybe a button press here or there, it actually works really well. But once you have a wider range of movement options available to you, it ends up not feeling precise at all. It feels like you're being restricted to eight degrees of movement, so it is unnecessarily difficult to get where you need to go. These are nothing special, but they're attached to an already good game, so it's fine. Another good use of the board. 
And if you wanted more of those events, just on a larger scale, well, here we have Wii Ski and Snowboard. Pretty big lost opportunity not using WII there. That seemed pretty obvious, but hey, that's just me. There was a game that came out before this one, simply called Wii Ski, but hey, this game has two more words attached to it. It must be better. Wii Ski and Snowboard took me by surprise. It is incredibly charming. You get thrown into a massive snowy mountain, and go. There are missions to tackle, a handful of customization options, and secrets spread throughout the entire mountain to encourage exploration. But really, this game is all about taking in the world at your own pace, and I am really digging it. Navigation is done primarily with either the skis or the snowboard, and as such, using the balance board involves a whole lot of tilting, as well as a whole lot of motion controls to accelerate. And while that can be enjoyable in short increments, I would not recommend playing the entire game this way. It gets old incredibly quickly in my opinion, and it makes some of the precision based missions way too difficult. Motion controls with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck are still required even when you're not using the board, but it is a lot more manageable that way, so like Mario and Sonic, the below average balance board controls are tacked on to an already pretty good game, so whatever. But we even got a full-blown sequel with Go Vacation. Now, I've wanted to talk about this game for a while. Essentially, this is kinda more of the same, but while Wii Ski and Snowboard specialized in atmosphere and exploration, Go Vacation is all about variety. On top of having a brand new snowy mountain to explore, we also have a beach resort, a mountainside, and a bustling city, each of them housing a bunch of unique minigames based on their respective locations, totaling a whopping 50 plus different events to take part in. And that is super awesome on paper, but man, Namco Bandai really tried to get motion controls in here as many ways as possible. Like there are more vehicle options for exploration now, which is cool, but for most of them, you operate by using some sort of motion controls with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, like tilting them at the same time to turn, on top of tilting with the balance board. It's just a bit much, honestly. Luckily though, for this little experiment, all of the minigames that can use the balance board are accessible right from the main menu. And at this point, it's kinda what you would expect. Basic tilting were applicable left, right, forward, and backward, and not much more. The only one that was really clever was the dog sledding game. To mimic pushing off of a sled, you physically push only one foot off the board. It feels really good. But like, they also put in a dancing game? and that doesn't use the board. Really? I mean, it's not that I really wanted a dancing game where I physically have to dance, it's just that I expected it, so I'm like disappointed and happy at the same time. Go Vacation is definitely the better game here, but the simplicity of Wii Ski and Snowboard still makes it a better fit for a balance board experience. Also, Go Vacation, like out of nowhere, got ported to the Switch for some reason, and you can play that with zero motion controls, so you're better off going that route instead anyway. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't we? So, have you ever played Tetris and you wish that you can play it with your feet? Well, luckily, Tetris Party Deluxe is right for you. This is dreadful. At least we got penguins. Rayman Raving Rabbids TV Party. Ubisoft couldn't help themselves. So this is really just Raving Rabbids 3, with Rayman once again having barely anything to do with the game aside from showing up in a few cutscenes and being forced into the title. Yeah, being a fan of Rayman in the late 2000s, it was not easy. It's a minigame collection where only a small handful of the games have the option to use the balance board. I know. I'm surprised as well. As expected, some of them do the tried and true tilting left and right, which does work as expected. But often the game also asks you to do some more specific movements, and I don't know, maybe it's just me here, but they rarely ever work as I wanted them to. There's a dancing game here that actually does use the board, but now I know why Go Vacation didn't use it. Every time the game told me to push into the board, it never recognized it. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but clearly this game isn't having it. And that's totally fine, because neither am I. But hey, at least there's a peeing game. Take that, Death Stranding. Oh, oh wait a second, is this a rabid cover of Toxic by Britney Spears? Oh, I take it all back, this game's great. The more balance board I play, the more I realize why it didn't really take off. When you have the more subtle movements, like moving left and right, 
it works fine, but then you're really only limited to the fitness games because those are the titles that did that really well. When you're told to do anything else, anything grander, it feels like you're simply wasting your time. Thankfully though, there are still a few games that I would really recommend outside of that. If you have a balance board, or if you don't, they're only like 5 or $10 at this point, then you'll have an extra little balance mode on top of everything. At, at least they tried? But I know I have to talk about at least one fitness game out there that was the balance board's main shtick after all, and if you've been doing the math at home, I've only done 9 games so far, where's the 10th? Well, if I'm gonna do this, I have to make sure it's legit. And I found nothing more legit than Nickelodeon Fit. Or, as the box would put it, Fit. Up on your toes! Up on your toes! Up on your toes! I'm done with this. I'm going back to Garfield where it's safe. 